Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for yet another time in your presence as we look into your word. Whatever you are, can you just lift up your voice and say after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the introduction of your word today. And I receive your word with meekness in my heart. And I decree and I declare that as your word comes to me today, I'm transformed by your word. I'm changed from the inside out. I have a listening here. And your word brings solutions and answers to the questions of my heart. Building me hope to stand in the faith of our Lord Jesus. In Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Father, we ask that as your word come this day, that the spirit in your word will leap out from the pages of the book into our spirit man. And we shall become the reality of the words we are about to hear. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. Amen. Welcome everyone. I'm super excited um, about what God is doing across the nations of the earth through this broadcast and of how it has been a great benefit, blessing, a platform of building, equipping for many in different parts of the country and outside the country. It is great to know that the word of the Lord is permeating into families, communities, societies, and we are privileged to carry that word to the ends of the earth. And once again, I want to tell you that today is going to powerfully impact your life, bringing light to your spirit man and answering questions in your heart, building you in the faith of our Lord Jesus. And by the help of the Holy Spirit, I'll be teaching briefly the revelation of Jesus. Or you can say, Jesus revealed. And this today's teaching is more of a teaching than a preaching. It is understanding the person of Jesus, understanding the importance of his person, and of course, understanding how you come into play when it comes to the person of Jesus. What does it mean to me to understand Jesus? What is my own part in this old revelation of the person of Jesus? It's a very impactful teaching session that you might want to send to someone who have asked you questions over and over again and also for you to have answers. Let us start today from the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15 scripture says the KJV version says this but sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear he said make whole in your heart the Lord God and it says, be ready always, and that is where I'm going, to give an answer. Amplified Version says it in a very more profound way. He said, but in your heart set Christ as holy and acknowledge him as Lord. Set Christ as holy and acknowledge him as Lord and be ready to give a logical defense. Very powerful. Be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope that is in you, but do it with cautiously and respectfully. The writer of this book says that you will have people ask you questions about the hope that is in you, about your faith, about your Christian work. He now says, be ready to give a logical defense. Another version of the Bible says, be ready to give answers always. Let me go to the message version. It says, truth, thick and thin. Keep your heart at attention in adoration before Christ, your master. He said, be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks you why you are living the way you are. And always with utmost courtesy, people will ask you why you are living the way you are. They will ask you why you believe who you believe, not what you believe. They will ask you what is the reason for your faith in resurrection, your faith in heaven, 
your faith in speaking in tongues, your faith in the person of Christ, they will ask you there. If you go to the NLT version, it said, instead, you must worship Christ as Lord in your life. If you are asked about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. This is the responsibility of a believer. That you cannot believe in this faith and not have the revelation nor explanation of your faith in the Lord. He said, always be ready. When anyone asks you, there are three kinds of people that will often ask you questions, whether consciously or unconsciously. The first set of people, we call them the unchurched people. The unchurched people will ask you questions on the reason for the hope that you have in Christ Jesus. Who are the unchurched people? The people who do not know the tenant of the Christian faith. Who do not understand the person of Jesus. Nor some of the things or all of the things that will do and we hold at high esteem in Christianity. They are the unchurched. They are mostly the unbelievers. Mostly the pagans. They will ask you why you believe in Jesus. They will ask you who is Jesus. They will probably even tell you that Jesus was a prophet. They will probably even tell you that Jesus was one of the prophets. They will tell you that the Bible is not true. They will tell you a whole lot of things. But it is not for you to engage in a debate with them. It is not for you to begin to fight with them. This is what scripture says. Scripture says that you should always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you the reason of your hope, the unchurched will ask you. The second kind or category of people that will ask you about your faith in the Lord are what the people that we call the mischurched people. Who are the mischurched people? They are the people who have been wrongly taught about church. They've been wrongly taught the word of God. They've been wrongly taught about the person of Christ. And because they've been wrongly taught, they will wrongly behave. They will wrongly react. They will wrongly believe. And based on the convictions that is wrong that they have, they will often challenge your authority and challenge your knowledge, challenge your faith. They will ask you if Jesus is the only way to God. They will ask you if the church is the only way to knowing God. They will ask you if truly there is a paradise or there is a heaven. They will ask you if speaking in tongues is for all. They will ask you if the gift of the healings has gone or is still in operation. They will ask you about your faith. They are the mischurch. They will ask you about why you sing, why you use equipment. I mean, I've, I've had people ask me why we use equipment in worshiping the Lord. That there was no equipment in the book of Acts. I mean, they, they were mischurched people and they will often ask questions. As a believer, scripture says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman would not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, which means that you study so as to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Those are the second category. The third category of people are who we call the churched people. The churched people are you and I. They are people who asking you the question is not as a result of debating with you, but for the purpose of clarity, for the purpose of more knowledge about the person of Christ. Believers come together and they begin to ask questions. What more do you know about the person of Christ? What more do you know about speaking in tongues? What more do you know about heaven? What more do you know about the end time? The church people also will ask you. As scripture says, for these three categories of people, you must have answers to give to them. Hallelujah. And one of those answers today is what I want to take this particular short minute to explain and to reveal to us. And probably in our following broadcast, we'll be able to put some more clarity to this. Number one is the fact that Jesus is the entirety of the message of God to the world. The entire Bible um, is written about uh, the message of and the message is Jesus. The entire Bible is written to glorify, to exalt 
one person. It's all about the person of Jesus. It's to glorify, to explain the person of God revealed in Jesus. That's the entire Bible. When you read from the, the book of Genesis to Revelation, you will discover that everything in types and in shadows, they are showing forth the person of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are showing forth from Genesis to Revelation. They are explaining the person of Jesus. So the Bible is not a novel. The Bible is a message. The Bible is a message. Jesus is not a messenger of God. Jesus is the message of God. Hallelujah. Second, you know, uh, in one of my broadcasts, I will teach uh, what I call the, uh, the, the infallible uh, uh, reliability of the Bible. The infallible reliability of the Bible to understand that the Bible is the truest literature on planet Earth. And there are both scientific backings to it. There are both archaeological backings to it and scriptural backings to it. That is the oldest and at the same time the truest literature in antiquity that backs up ancient happenings that are real till date. Hallelujah. And we'll talk about that in other broadcast. But today I want to clearly explain the person of Jesus. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's a teaching class. Just follow me. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Hallelujah. Verse 2. Scripture says, Preach the word. Be in season and out of season. Be ready in season rather and out of season. He said, preach the word. Be ready. The same thing where he was talking about in the book of Peter there. He said that you always have answers. Here he said, be ready in season and out of season. And there is something that he said here. He said, preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Not preach the words. Hallelujah. Preach the word. It was a definite word that I was saying. Preach, not preach some of the words, not preach a word, or not preach the words of God. He said, preach the word. There is a definite word that I was talking about. Then if you go to the book of John, chapter 1, I'm going somewhere, follow me carefully. We want to lay foundation there, then we'll fly. John chapter 1, thank you, Jesus, from verse 1. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It was in the beginning with God and you know and he said and all things were made through the word and without the word nothing was made that was made. In the word was life and the life was the light of man. Hallelujah. So the word there talks about God. Hallelujah. Then you will now see where scripture now made mention of this word. He said and the word verse 4 he said, and the word that we are talking about, which was God, he said, became flesh. The word became flesh, not the words. There is a difference between the words and the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, which means the word we are talking about there that became flesh is Jesus. So when he said in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. Then in verse 14, he now said the word which was God became flesh. So Jesus was God becoming flesh. Jesus was God in flesh. It's on here, here because it says that the word became flesh. Hallelujah. The word. So it's out of the word that we now have the words of life. Out of the word is now why we have the words of life. These words that we preach to you that is called the words of life uh, is from the word, is from Jesus. Let me show you that. John chapter 6 verse 68. John chapter 6 verse 68. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 6 verse 68. Thank you, Lord. But Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? This was after Jesus speaking to the disciple and said, do you also want to go? And Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. 
He didn't say you have the word. He said you have the words of eternal life. So it's from the word that we got that we get the words of eternal life. It is from the word that we get the words that we speak to you. Jesus is the word. Is the revealed God is the express image of God. Is someone hearing me here? So Jesus uh, is the revelation of God on earth. Uh, men could not see God, uh, but when they see Jesus, that was why Jesus speaking said, He said, He said, Haven't seen me, you still ask for the Father. Because if you see me, you have seen the Father. So Jesus is the express image of God. The God that you cannot see, you see it in Jesus. What Jesus did was God walking on earth. I'm going somewhere here. Jesus is the word. You don't believe me? Let me take you again to Romans, to Revelation chapter 19. Some of you are still asking, what is this man saying? Let me show you something powerful. Because in heaven, Jesus was known as the word of God. You understand? His name is, the, the, the name to give the word of God on earth is the name Jesus. So in heaven, he was not known as Jesus before he showed up. He was known as the word in heaven. It was when he got to the earth that he was given a name for the purpose of his destiny and for identification that they gave him the name Jesus. If you read in the book of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, I believe, scripture says that a virgin shall bear a son and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Hallelujah. If you go to the book of Matthew chapter 1 from verse 21 to 22, scripture says, and his name shall be called Jesus. But in heaven, his name was not called Jesus. It was either referred to as the lamb that was slain for, before the foundation of the world, or it was referred to as what I'm about to show you. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse, and he who sat on him, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and make war. Hallelujah. His eyes were as like a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. He had names written that no one knew except himself. Verse 13, he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. This was his destiny. Hallelujah. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called what? The Word of God. My God, that's very powerful. So in heaven, when they saw this, uh, this entity, this, this lovely, you know, uh, beautiful person sitting on the horse, uh, he said his clothes was robed uh, with a robe dipped in the blood. His name was called the word of God. Hallelujah. So Jesus in heaven was referred to as the word of God. If the angel wanted to approach him, they called him the word of God. Is that they call him the faithful? Is that they call him the truth? Uh, or they call him the word? Word of God, hallelujah. So Jesus uh, is the word of God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. So Jesus revealed is revealed. So if you want to know God, you know God by knowing Jesus, and if you want to know Jesus, you know Jesus by knowing the word, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me quickly say this. When you look into all the uh, um, books of the Bible, the reason why they were canonized, when I, when I say canonized, I mean the ones that we know are 66 uh, in the Bible, were because they referred to Jesus uh, in types and shadow. Every book that referred to Jesus out of all those listed archaeological uh, literature, they were they, they, they was listed as one uh, uh, prophesying about the birth, the, uh, the, 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 the death, and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus, uh, where the one canonized. Hallelujah. So even the inclusion of some of these books of the law and prophet uh, were included as Bible because they pointed to the person of Jesus. And I'm going to show you if I have more time. And in some of our broadcasts. So, Jesus, the word is, the per is a person. Jesus is the word. The word is the way. Hallelujah. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. When you go to the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 17, you will see that. Acts chapter 5, verse 28, you will see that. And everybody, hallelujah, 
preach about Jesus. The entire message of the Old Testament was about Jesus. From Genesis, the tree in the middle of the garden was about Jesus. To Genesis, the rod that was lifted, and Exodus, the rod that was lifted up as a serpent is Jesus. Every type and shadow, Jonah spending three days in the belly of the fish, that's also a type and shadow of Jesus. Everything showed up to Jesus. The blood that was applied to the lintel in the book of Exodus also is a type and shadow of Jesus. So the canonized books were canonized and they were numbered with the 66 books and compiled rather as the 66 books of the Bible, Old and New Testament. Why? Because they spoke about Jesus. Everyone spoke about Jesus. John, in the book of John chapter 1 from verse 23 to 27, when they asked him, are you the Christ? He said, I am not the Christ, but I am the voice that cry out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. All that John came to do, John came to speak about Jesus. The entire ministry of John the Baptist was to speak about Jesus. And I'm going to tell you how this relates to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Philip came to speak about Jesus. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5 to, 5 to 6. See what it says here. Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 8. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Glory be to God. And Philip went down to the Samaria and preached Christ to them. And preached what? Christ to them. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. The entire sermon of Philip was about Christ. The entire sermon of Stephen in the book of Acts chapter 7, verse 54 to 58. Uh, 50, Acts chapter 7. Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 7. I want to show you something very powerful. Verse 50. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 54 to 56. See what it says here. It said, And when they heard this thing, they were caught to earth and gnashed at him at their teeth, and being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven, and Jesus standing at the right side, and said, Look, I see heaven open, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand. All that Stephen preached was about Jesus. If you go to the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 14, for uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 14, Acts chapter 2, verse 22 and 23, all Peter spoke about was about Jesus. If you go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 1 to 2, all Paul, he said, I determined not to know anything among you except Christ and Him crucified. All that Paul preached entirely was to preach about Jesus. So this showed us that the entire message of the disciples, the entire message of the apostles, the entire message of the prophet was pointing to one person, Jesus. So Jesus is the center of the gospel. Jesus is the gospel himself. Jesus is the center of the Bible. Jesus is the Bible himself. Hallelujah. Jesus himself spoke about himself concerning himself in the Bible. Luke chapter 24. Thank you, Lord. This is a teaching that you need to sit down with, look into the scripture and see for yourself. Luke chapter 24, verse 27. See what the Bible says here. It said, I'm beginning at Moses and the prophet. When the Bible, when, when scripture says Moses and the prophet, it means the law and the prophet. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Which means that it was saying beginning at Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers there. He said, and the prophet. What does he mean by the prophet? Both the major prophet and uh, the minor prophet. Starting from Isaiah to Ezekiel to Jeremiah to Daniel and all the prophets there. He said, beginning at Moses and all the prophets talking about the Old Testament there he said he expounded to them in all scripture all things concerning him that's Jesus there when Jesus was teaching them, he said, starting from Genesis, I will explain myself to you. When you get to Exodus, I will explain myself to you. When you get to Leviticus, I will explain myself to you. When you get to Numbers, Deuteronomy, I will explain myself to you. And if we move from Micaiah to Zephaniah to Agai to Abacuc and all those, he said, I expounded unto them in all scriptures concerning himself. Everything. Starting from the Old Testament to the New Testament, 
points to Jesus. And that is why when you read, he said until now, when they read it with in their heart, he said they do not know. He said, but they have the spirit of the Lord there. He said, as they behold, they have been transformed there. When you read into it by the spirit of liberty, you see that upon every book of the Bible is pointing you, is pointing you to Jesus. Whatsoever that you hear in the kingdom or in the gospel that is not pointing you to Jesus is not the gospel. Did you get what I'm saying here? Whatever that you hear, hallelujah, within the pages of the scripture, whatever that you hear that is not pointing you to the man, Jesus, is not the gospel. Paul said, I determine not to know anything among you. I know I preach healing. I know I preach prosperity. I know I said all those things. But all those things that I've said must be pointing you to Jesus. Must be pointing to Jesus. A gospel that is not pointing to Jesus is another gospel. And another gospel preached to you that does not speak about Jesus is a cursed gospel. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now look at what Jesus said. Let's go further. Verse 44. Luke 24, verse 44. I love this. He said, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was with you. He said, All things must be fulfilled. This is Jesus speaking there. All things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses. You know, I, I just explained the law of Moses to you from verse 27 there. In the law of Moses and in the prophets and it didn't stop there. And it says and the Psalms. Hallelujah. He said and the Psalms. Which means when you read Psalms the Psalms there means uh, Psalms, Proverbs uh, and Songs of Solomon. Ecclesiastes. Uh, he said when you read all those ones uh, they still point to me. And I'm going to show you in the scripture. John chapter 5 verse 39. John chapter 5, verse 39. See what Jesus said here. Jesus says, search the scripture. The scripture means the written documents. That's what it means. When you see scriptures there, it means written documents. Search the scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life. He was talking to them there. He said, and these are they that testify of me. Which means the scripture testify of Jesus. Whenever you read the scripture, it must testify of Jesus. Whenever you preach the scripture, it must testify of Jesus. Whatever you study in the scripture, it must testify of Jesus. Everything is a concerted effort to make you see Jesus. That's Jesus speaking there. If you go to verse 46 of the same scripture there, thank you Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He said, if you believe Moses, you will believe me, for he wrote about me. I love Jesus. Oh, I love, I, kai, 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 kai. I love him. The confidence of Jesus was way out of this world. He said, if you believe Moses, talking to the Pharisees there, talking to people giving to the law, if you ever believe Moses, if you ever believe in the shedding of the blood of the lamb, shedding of the blood of the ram, Shedding of the blood of the goats, shedding of the blood of the of the dove of the turtle. If you ever believe in the in the temple in the temple ordinances, if you ever believe in the outer court, inner court, and holy of holies, if you ever believe in the cloud of witness, if you ever believe in all the things written by Moses and all his ten commandments and every other thing that follows, he said, if you ever believe in Moses, you would believe in me. Why? For you wrote about me. Moses wrote about Jesus. Moses wrote about Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. My God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. Then I move on. He said then I said. Behold I have come in the volume of the book. It is written, written of me to fulfill or to do your will O God. So Jesus said in the volume of the book it is written to do the will of the Father. Two ways to know that the Old Testament revealed Jesus. The two ways the Old Testament revealed Jesus. Number one, by prophecy. There are prophecies in the Old Testament that confirms that the entire Old Testament, just as I've shown you Jesus speaking about the Old Testament, then I'll begin to show you one. Let me just show you two or three. Then you see that the Old Testament spoke about Jesus. Then I'll go and round up with your own part. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Powerful scripture. Woo! Glory to God. 
Look at what it says there. He said, unto us a child is born. This is the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah is, uh, Isaiah was a, was an anointed prophet that lived in the Old Testament, Testament, yet prophesied about the coming of Jesus. Prophesied about the New Testament. Lived in the reality of the New Testament. Look at what he said. He said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is thousands of years before Jesus was conceived. So, the Old Testament prophet, to be, to be specific, specific there, prophesied about Jesus. Look at it. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. It's the prophecy of Isaiah. He said, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. His name shall be called Emmanuel. Prophecy of Isaiah. Thousands of years before Jesus was born. So, they prophesied. The entire prophet prophesied of the person of Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at what he said. Hallelujah. In, 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 in Luke chapter 24, verse 44, he said even the Psalms prophesied of Jesus. Let me show you a clear prophecy of the passion of Christ. My God. He said they cried to you, they were delivered. People cried to God, they were delivered. They trusted and they were not ashamed. But Jesus speaking there, that David rather, prophesying of the passion and the, 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 the process that Christ will go through. Look at verse 6. He said, but I'm a worm and, a, and no man, a reproach of men despised by the people. All who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the leaves, they shake the hair, saying, he trusted in the Lord. Remember he was saying that some people cried out and you hear them. And that was what happened when Jesus went to the Mount of Gethsemane and he was praying and he was praying and it's as though the Father didn't hear him. But people prayed and God answered them. But for him, it was different because he was fulfilling a purpose. Look at what he said there. He said, he said, but you took me out of the womb. You made me trust while my mother was, while on my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from bed, from my mother's womb. You have been my God. Be not far from me for trouble is near, but there is no one to help. Many, are, many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of passion has encircled me. They gape at me with their mouth like a raging and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water and my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It's melt within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shed. My lips cleave to my jaw. Yet you brought me to the dust of the earth. For dogs surrounded me, the congregation of the wicked and closed me. My, they pierced my hand and my feet. <laughs> Did you hear that? that? He said, the, this, is, this is the prophecy of David thousands of years before Jesus was born. He said, they pierced my hands and my feet. He said, I can count all my bones. They looked and stared at me. They divide my garments amongst them. And my clothing, they cast lots. My God, my God. This is exactly what happened at Golgotha. He said, but you, O Lord, be not far from me. Oh, my strength, hasten to help me. Look at how he explained he said, they cast, they divide my garment among them, and my clothing, they cast lots. Exact picture of the happenings at Golgotha. <laughs> oh my God. If you read the book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 10, it said, the scepter shall not depart. Hallelujah. Until Shiloh comes. The scepter there means the rod, the branch, the stick shall not depart from Judah there, he said, until the Messiah come. Prophecies showed that everything in the prophet points to Jesus. I have more. The prophecy of Jesus being spot upon, Isaiah chapter 50 verse 6. The prophecy that he will retain the throne of David, his father forever. For Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 12 to 13. And another prophecy that depicted the person and the passion of Christ, just as Psalm 22 depicted it, was Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. I want to show you that, then I'll round up. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 53. Oh, Karo Bahaya. Woo! Glory to God. See what it says here. Ayada Bokoshia. Thank you, Lord. Verse 2. It said, For he, grew, he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. 
he has no form of godliness when we see him. He said, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised, rejected. Exactly what Psalm 22 says. Rejected by men, a man of sorrow acquainted with grief. As we eat, as it were, our faces from him, he was despised. And we sh- did not en- esteem him. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. He said, yes, we had deemed him stricken. He said, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we were healed. And we were like sheep. And we were like sheep gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. See verse 7. And he was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before the Sherite's silence. So he opened not his mouth. These are prophecies thousands of years before Jesus, Jesus showed up on the scene. So the entire prophet spoke about Jesus. When you read from Genesis to Revelation, it was pointing to you to one man. Therefore, any message, any gathering, any achievement that does not point you to Jesus is not effective in the kingdom. So how does this apply to you Because your own life too was a prophecy given by Jesus. Your life is meant to fulfill Jesus' prophecy. Matthew chapter 5. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Matthew chapter 5. I want to show you something very powerful here. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You came to fulfill the prophecy of Jesus. Your life and my life is about fulfilling the prophecy of Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Look at what Jesus said concerning you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the sauce loses its its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under by men. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He said, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand. And it gives light to those who are in the house. Look at verse 16 is where I'm going. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify. Which means the light that you have should shine before men for the purpose of glorifying the Father. For the purpose of glorifying the Father. The reason why you are doing well, the reason why he's blessing you, prospering you, the reason why he's advancing your cause is so that the Father can be glorified. Jesus can be exalted. Thank you, Lord. So you came to fulfill the prophecy of Jesus in Matthew chapter 5. You came to continue the works of Jesus in John chapter 14. You came to what? Conclude. Continue and to conclude. Say continue and to conclude. This is is what Jesus said. Most surely I said to you, he who believes in me, the work that I do, he will do also. And greater work than this, he will do because I go to my father. So he came to conclude and to con- co- continue rather and to conclude. Finally, you came as a sent one by God. John chapter 20, verse 21. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 20, verse 21. He said, so Jesus said to them, peace be to you as the Father has sent me. Me, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. So the same way the Father sent Jesus to bring light to the world, you are sent to bring light to the world. The same way Father sent Jesus to heal to deliver, you are sent to heal to deliver. The same way the Father sent Jesus for the sake of humanity, to help humanity, you are sent to help humanity. Your life is about Jesus. Your job is about Jesus. Your family is about Jesus. Your decision about Jesus. Your teaching about Jesus. Your going to church about Jesus. Hearing the word about Jesus. Training up your children about Jesus. Let everything about your life reveal Jesus. Whatever you are, speak alongside with me. I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, today I recommit myself to showing Jesus and revealing Jesus in my days, in my generation, in my sphere, in my office, everywhere I go. I recommit myself to living the life that glorifies Jesus. Right now, lift up your voice and pray. I I release myself. I recommit myself to living the life that glorifies Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm super excited that you have heard these words. 
please go back, hear it over and over again, send it to someone. As you have listened to it and you continue to listen to it, there are things that you will yet see as you go into the world and they will reveal themselves more to you. This is my prayer, that the Lord will reveal himself more to you in this teaching and in every other teaching in our broadcast. In the name of the Lord Jesus. If you want to give your tithe, your offerings, and your partnership, your pledge, and um, your partnership with us uh, in Hidden Life Express Center, you can see the uh, details on the screen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for out of the abundance of which you have blessed us with. We bring our partnerships, our tithes, our offerings, our givings into your house. We ask that you receive it, Holy Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, this is what I want to tell you. Don't give up on your Christian faith. Keep equipping yourself for the day we come that the world will beckon upon the wisdom of God in your mouth, in your life, in your family, in the name of the Lord Jesus. We're looking forward to hosting you one of our services as we launch out our first physical service here in Lagos and all over the world. You can join us online. God bless you.